Home Assistant release 2024.11 introduced some changes and new options when using MQTT Discovery to have your external DIY devices discovered and added automatically to Home Assistant. This short video will introduce those changes. Hi and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. About a year ago, I did a video on how you could use MQTT Discovery to add your custom DIY devices to Home Assistant automatically without end user configuration or intervention. Among other details, it showed the MQTT topics and payloads used to add your entities to Home Assistant and how multiple entities could be grouped together under a single device. Well, Home Assistant 2024.11 introduced some changes and new options into how these payloads and topics are structured, especially when it comes to creating devices with multiple entities. This video is only going to cover the topic and payload changes. If you want to know more about how to use MQTT Discovery with Home Assistant, check out that original video. Just remembering that when you get to that video, the section where I talk about creating a device out of multiple entities, the payloads and topics used in this video can now be used instead. With the original discovery method, now called the component method, each entity or component in Home Assistant is created with a separate MQTT message consisting of a topic containing the component type like switch or sensor or light, and then the payload specific to that entity or component. Now, if you wanted multiple entities to be combined as part of a single device, you then added a nested device key for each entity. Entities with the same device info would then be combined into a device under Home Assistant. With the new device method, a single MQTT message is published for the device and all of its entities or components. Now note that the discovery topic uses device for the type where the previously the entity type was used. The payload consists of three primary nested keys, device, origin, and components. The device key would contain much the same info used in the previous message, like the device name, unique ID, model, etc. The origin section, which is now required when using the device discovery method, consists of at least a name, but optionally can also contain a software version and a support URL. These origin details are logged in the Home Assistant core event log when an item is discovered or updated. The new components key now contains individual nested subkeys for each entity or component. The unique ID is used as the key with a new platform type that specifies the entity type like switch, sensor, or light. The remainder of the keys are basically the same as the individual component method. The original video also covered how to issue an MQTT message to delete discovered entities. Under the original component-based method, you publish a message on the same topic as the original discovery, but with an empty payload. This removes the entity from Home Assistant. If entities are part of a device, the device is then removed with no entities for that device remain. Under the new device-based method, you publish an empty payload to the original device discovery topic. This removes the device and all related entities or components. But what if you just want to remove a single entity or component from a device, but not the other entities of the device itself? To do this, you just use the original discovery payload, but for the component you want to remove, you only specify the original unique ID and the platform for that entity and no other keys. This will remove just the entity while leaving other components and the device intact. Now, obviously these changes will also impact how you create your JSON payload in whatever language that you're using. While you'll make more use of nested keys, overall you'll have fewer MQTT published statements in your code. Full documentation, including how to migrate your current component-based discovery to the new device-based discovery, is included in the official Home Assistant documentation, which is linked to down in the video description. Again, check out that original video for details on how to implement MQTT discovery for your own DIY devices. While the old component method is still supported, at least for now, the recommended method moving forward is to use the new device-based discovery. I'll be back in the next few weeks with more videos on Home Assistant, DIY electronics, LEDs, and more. But until that time, I'd like to say thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon.